Hi everyone and welcome back to Coachy TV. This is the second of a two-part series on a lactic threshold or tempo type workouts. Um, we're going to talk about the specific workout uh, plans in this video. If you missed the first one on the science behind lactic threshold running, you can click on it in the description down below. I am Kyle Giacchino. I'm the head boys cross country and track coach at Wharton High School in Tampa, Florida, and I have been for the last six years. My credentials are on the screen if you want to take a look. So specific lactic threshold workouts for first, your pure distance kid. All of these workout types need to start with a, a complete warm up first off. You're probably going to have some kind of continuous running and then your drills, um, skips, strides, that kind of thing. Um, in my aerobic threshold workout series, I advocated for not doing this because it doesn't, um, it, it loses some volume or you're getting volume that really isn't helping you. Um, if you're doing a volume on, are you doing a warm up on a day that you're pretty much your warm up and your pace is going to be the same? But for this type of workout, these medium intensity type workouts, you do need a full warm up. Um, they are going to be doing some, some work that is going to require having the body fully prepped. So whatever your your warm up is, make sure you're doing a full one on this day. So the first type for a distance runner is a fast tempo, or right at their lactic threshold, that point where the body produces and clears acid in unison. Um, this is 85% of their current date pace VVO2 max. Um, in the previous video, we talked about how to ta uh, set workout uh, intensities for um, a hypothetical kid that you could fit in with any of your athletes. So again, if you missed that, click on the description down below. For a fast tempo workout, do not do more than one per microcycle. And don't double up with any other lactic threshold type that we're going to go over here. Of the four I'm going to show you, pick one per microcycle, seven days, 12 days, whatever it is you do, and do one of them. Which one makes sense for that part of the training year and the kid that you're working with and the kids you're working with. Um, if you do more, you're going to really drain their ability to, to have the uh, stored glucose or glycogen for faster pace type workouts. You're going to have a lot more um, issues with adaptation because it's just a higher intensity type workout. Don't try and mix and match these. Like I'm going to take out an extra recovery run, um, which you should have a couple, two to three per microcycle as well as a long run and say, oh, I'm going to do two of these by taking out a recovery run. You're going you're gonna to have an issue if you're trying to burn the candle at both ends there. Um, have them check their heart rate to make sure they're in the proper zones for this. We talked about this is 125, I mean 150 to 180 beats per minute. Or if you have them check, which I encourage you have your kids do, have them check at the carotid artery in their neck. If they're 25 to 30 beats in 10 seconds, they're in the right zone. Um, don't have them just check with their with their wrist uh, watch if it has a heart rate monitor. Those are okay at getting generalities, but they're not nearly as accurate as just counting. So get them used to checking for their proper zone and make sure they're in it. Um, three to five miles or 20 to 40 minutes. I usually advocate for about 30 minutes maximum. You can go out to 40. You can go out to 60 actually with this if you really need to. But anything more than 30, and, and I get the feeling and I get the the sense that my kids always there's a, there's, there's a diminishing return. You're you're getting you're not getting as much as you're giving up with those extra 10 minutes. If you're worried about volume, in a later slide we'll talk about how you can add in some volume safely on these days so it doesn't slip. These miles can be done straight through or broken up. Um, if you live in a cooler climate, you can probably do these straight through. We're going to talk about how heat affects this in a later slide. But for me, in Tampa, Florida, where heat is a huge issue, if I want to do a fast tempo type workout, um, I typically have my kids go for two miles. I typically aim for about four on these. Two miles, and then I give them a float period at aerobic threshold or easy pace. And as they're, they're doing this lower intensity type of um, jog, they're just checking their heart rate. And as soon as the, the majority of the group gets back down to 25 beats in a 10 second window, they take off and finish the second half of the run. So they haven't gone below lactic threshold. They're still in the training zone you're looking for, and they're still definitely in aerobic threshold training, so they're getting the 20 continuous minutes. And this just allows them to be more get a more quality type workout, more because of the heat. And, and it can be because of the intensity too, because this can stack up on itself. Um, that's a, a running break or a jog um, recovery. If it is a complete static um, recovery that you're giving the kids, like a water break or something, just make sure that it's short, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Um, you, you don't want to definitely go below aerobic threshold on this because then you're going to reset the idea of you need 20 continuous minutes to really get aerobic um, enhancements on any of these systems. So keep the, the breaks pretty short. Um, this is actually one I do most of the time, a moderate tempo. Um, I think you get most of the benefits of a fast tempo, but you don't have the super high intensity. We're looking at 78 to 82 percent of the current date pace of VVO2 max. Just like with the fast tempos, 
no more than one per microcycle and don't double up with another lactic threshold type run. Same distance and, and timing is used here. I find that these are much easier to do straight through. The lower intensity, bringing it down to 78 to 82, most of the time the kids, even on a warmer day, can go straight through these. But if you need to have a break, go ahead and, and again, um, 30 seconds, you can go out to 60, but I keep it usually about 30 just to make sure that they don't slip out of the zone. Now, more workouts for distance runners. You could also do a fartlek. For those of you guys that have never done a fartlek before, this is, after your warm-up, um, a, 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 it actually translates to speed play, where you're having periods of ons, or faster pace, and offs, which slip back into your easy pace or aerobic threshold type workouts. Um, this is a lactic threshold type run. Um, but, and so just like before, you would not want to do more than one per microcycle or double up with any other ones. Um, so you may have them go for one minute at their either fast tempo or moderate tempo pace, whichever one you want to do a work. And then you have a, a minute of a recovery at aerobic threshold. Um, I typically stick to the one ones. The reason being is if you're doing only a minute off, you're probably going to keep your heart rate, even though you're going aerobic threshold, in that 150 to 180 range we're looking for. Um, but you can go out to two minutes and two minutes, or I've seen it gone all the way out to five and five. I think on the five and five, you're, you're going to have your heart rate slip probably a little bit too much if you're looking for more of a continuous, higher intensity sort of run. Um, but it can certainly be done effectively at those longer um, on-off periods. Um, the benefit here is, like, let's say you wanted to do some fast tempo work. So maybe you want to do uh, 10 minute on, minute offs at tempo pace. That's a 20 minute workout. But if you do it on offs, you're going to get the heart rate and some of the, the cardiovascular um, benefits of this fast tempo. But you're not going to be draining as much glycogen. Um, you're, you're not going to have sort of the negative effects that can happen on the muscular system and the metabolic systems that can come with doing the straight through. So it could be a good option if you have a really important maybe meet coming up, but you don't want to really hit them hard with a continuous tempo. This is one way you could sort of get most of the benefits with it without um, some of the negatives that can come with it. This is typically done as either total time or reps. Again, I, I recommend doing it about 20 minutes. Um, so it would be a, a minute on, minute off. Um, would be 10 reps of, of that. Um, but you can also do it for distance. You could just tell your kids, um, hey, we're going to do four miles of fart lick. Um, and once you get back, you're done, regardless of how many reps it was. Um, and it kind of gives them an encouragement to actually go a little bit faster on some of those if you do it that way. Um, I do suggest doing this a little bit later in the training year, not only to take a little bit off as you're doing higher intensity stuff and getting races in, but also fart licks really need to be done more on feel. Um, I, I get a little bit um, hesitant on workouts that do f that go by feel because a lot of things can go wrong. They need to know what their fast tempo pace feels like, and they need to know what their moderate tempo pace feels like, whichever one you want them to do in the fart like. Your older kids are going to be good with this, especially if you've done some of these intensities. They know what a tempo run will feel like if they've been with you for a couple years. The younger kids may not execute this workout properly. Um, you may be beneficial and you, ha you may, may have a kid that's maybe been with you for a while. Maybe they're not as, as high of, a, of an athlete in terms of their, their abilities, but maybe they can help out those younger groups. But if you don't, you might want to stick with a younger group doing just a shorter, moderate tempo if you're trying to break things up for them. Um, the other reason why you have to do this on feel is with these shorter windows, minute or two minutes, GPS watches are just really, really not good at responding. Um, they really will say you're running too slowly early on in the rep, and then they just compensate by saying you're going way too fast on the second half of the rep. So again, this is more of a feel type workout. Um, don't have them just tied to looking at their GPS watches. The last one is called a critical velocity test or a VCR test. Um, this is only for your really, really higher trained kids. This is the kids that have been in your program for a number of years. They probably came in with a baseline with distance running. Um, this is a, a very high intensity workout, but, but can be effective if done correctly. This is 30 to 60 minutes, best possible distance. Something that they can actually not, and not a, a speed up and slow down. I, I like a, contis, a consistent type of 30 to 60 minutes. Um, I suggest only going 30 with a high school kid. Um, you can get good usable data on it. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on critical velocity tests because it can give you a whole um, different 
additional metric to track your kid with running economy and different paces. Um, but 30 minutes will get the job done also. And again, only for kids with very, very high training ages. Don't even try to attempt this with a brand new kid. Even if it's a kid that comes in with really good experience, I would not do this unless they've been in your program for a year or two and you really know um, what you would get out of them, even that kid that comes in with a good baseline. Lactic threshold workouts for a middle or a very short middle distance kid. So this is not a, a miler or an 800 meter kid who's been in your program for a while. This is a kid that's maybe a 4'8 kid who you're trying to get to run cross country the first time. What kind of workouts could you do for that kid? Well, short middle distance runners, this is not ideal for them. It's not really an ideal choice, the ones that we just mentioned before. None of those are really going to be good for them for this very important reason on the muscular system side is right here. The oxidative fast twitch muscle fibers are increasing their aerobic abilities. This is a huge reason why we do this with pure distance kids. But this is the reason why a lot of sprint coaches will say, I don't want my sprinters to run cross country because they get slower, they get slow twitch. So there are three muscle fiber types. We talked about this a lot in the first video series, but essentially that middle one that can act either aerobically or anaerobically depending on the training you give them. Lactic threshold workouts is right in that wheelhouse that activates these to act more aerobically. Lower intensity workouts, easy pace or aerobic threshold runs, and um, I have a description in, the, in the, uh, the comments below if you want to click on those. Those are so low intensity that middle distance kids can do and it not affect these muscle fiber types. But at tempo pace, it's right in the wheelhouse where these types of muscle fibers need to be recruited to act more aerobically. This is why you don't do this type of tempo running with a sprinter if you want them to have an effective cross-country season. You know it can help their expand their, their um, aerobic system to help them run rounds in the track season. And you know that if you get them in a cross-country situation, they would do a good job. This is the reason why you would not do a lactic threshold workout with them. But there is one reason why a certain kid might benefit from some kind of lactic threshold run is on the metabolic system, and it's right here. The increased ability to remove lactic acid is done at tempo pace. So maybe you have, especially you might get this with a younger kid, a kid that your sprint coach is like, man, they can give me like one or two really good 200s or, or a 300 or something, but they're just, they're just done after that, where the older kids can give maybe, you know, three, four, or five, whatever the workout is that the sprint coach is looking for. They just can't get rid of the lactate, even if you give them um, two, three, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, 20 minutes, something like that. They just can't bounce back. They can't remove the acid from their system. This kid might benefit from a very small dose of a tempo type workout because this will help um, at that type of pace. So the way you could do it for this kid is doing a track tempo run. Definitely for this type of kid, no more than one per microcycle. Um, really probably only 20 minutes will do the trick with this kid broken up into maybe 400 meter intervals or maybe 600 or 800 meter intervals. Um, if you go back to the first video on this and, and see how you can create workout paces, you just figure out what this kid's either moderate um, or fast tempo. Moderate tempo would probably work for this, um, but you could do either depending on the kid. Figure out what their 400 or 600 or 800 meter pace would be for them right there and you run intervals at that pace, but you're still gonna give them a short break period here, okay? This kid, you're probably going to be more able to convince to do it on a track anyway than a continuous run um, at tempo pace. They tend to like the track a little bit more. During their breaks, make sure you're checking their heart rate to make sure they're in lactic threshold training zones. These kids do have a tendency of having their heart rate spike because they're doing those fast, high-intensity um, intervals and repetitions. So just make sure they're in the right training zone. If you do feel this is right for a kid because they're just not removing lactic acid very quickly, keep it early in the training year in a conditioning general preparation type of um, period and definitely be done eight to 10 weeks before the peaking period. I would say probably before that, but definitely no later than that time of year for this type of kid. So some look fors and danger points that you, uh, you wanna make sure you're, you're thinking of here. Heat changes everything. This is an aerobic workout, just like aerobic threshold and long runs. Um, and just be cognizant of this. Try to have this on a cooler day, especially if you're doing the faster ones, um, a fast tempo or definitely a VCR test. It needs to be on a cooler day, cooler part of the week, cooler time of day. 
make sure they're checking their heart rate 25 to 30 in a 10 second window if it's above that only because of the heat not because they're going fast you're really not getting the desired training effect that you're wanting on this day you can need to adjust maybe go to a recovery type pace um, just make sure that you understand heart rate is very much affected by heat as well as their vo2 max be smart about the distance and time for the younger kids um, be selectively selectively shorten some of the lesser trained kids um, a, a lactic threshold in lesser trained kids is much closer to their aerobic threshold points so they're going to be more negatively affected by some of these faster paces so you're going to probably want to do more moderate tempos with lesser trained kids. The advanced ones can stick to the faster paces. <coughs> um, one of the things that can happen on these days is losing volume. If you're only going maybe three, four, five miles, even with a warm-up mile, which really doesn't benefit you aerobically because it's too far apart from anything continuous, you can have the volume slip on these days. The way you can combat this is with adding an immediate cool down. Um, these workouts are great for converting muscle fibers for the kids that you want that, enhancing lactic clearance and running economy. Um, but these higher intensities, they're going to want to stop a little bit more often. Um, so just make sure that you don't let the volume slip. You can go straight into a one to two mile cool down to add some of this volume back. So if you've got a four mile um, workout with a two mile cool down, well now you've got a, a recovery run type of distance of six miles. Just don't let them completely stop. Um, stopping for anything more than about 60 seconds and that 20 minute window resets and you're really not doing anything by adding this in if you're giving them too much of a break in between it. The way I like to do this, because if you have them go, maybe it's a four mile tempo, two out, two back, and then try and add it. Um, if you're coming back to the parking lot, you're going to get some waiting around. People are going to run to the bathroom. They're going to run to get a drink. Whereas if you maybe have them go out for further and then have them come back to the point there's a mile or two at the end. So they're a mile or two out of the parking lot or however your, your running situation is. And then they have to do this cool down back in and the cool down aerobic threshold, it's probably gonna be slower than their true aerobic threshold if you had it in terms of paces, but have them check their heart rate. As long as they're over 120, they're good. Try and get them under 150. That's a good way to get some of this volume back. So some key takeaway points here. Lactic threshold workouts are an extension of continuous aerobic workouts. They accent what you're doing. They help out with them, but they are not the staple of a distance runner's diet. One per microcycle. Don't try and double it up. Don't try and add more of these than, the, than, than you need. The benefits are still aerobic in nature. Cardiovascular, muscular, and metabolic improvements are very similar to aerobic threshold or easy type workouts. And again, as I just mentioned, do not overdo these. Pick one. Pick the right one for the part of the year that you're in. I'll do a whole series of videos on that. Um, just pick what's right for that particular kid and that particular part of their training year. <coughs> Too many of these will reduce glycogen and prevent proper adaptation. Um, just mention this, the, the right distance for that kid. Higher training age can handle faster tempos and um, uh, fart licks and VCR tests. Lower training kids should stick to more moderate tempos. And don't let the volume slip. Um, an extension of continuous robot workout. So make sure that you maybe add a, a, a cool down mile or two on the back end so that you've got the, the right volume you want for that day. And that's it for, for this lactic threshold series. Um, if you like the video, think about maybe liking um, down below or subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them in the comment section down below. Next up, um, we're going to look at maybe some um, pros and cons. Look at lactic threshold workouts next to an aerobic threshold workout and see what um, the benefits are of one versus another. And I'm also going to start a series on aerobic power or VO2 max long interval type workouts. So you can look for those in the coming days. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, until next time, this has been Coachy TV.